Hello all. In this video, I will give you a brief overview of the OLED display on uh, the board before we actually start the coding to control the OLED display from the Zinc chip. Okay, so this is the OLED display. This is the part number. So if you want to know more details about the display, you can download the user guide for this particular OLED display and you can find all the details there. Um, I'm just giving a brief overview of the display. So the OLED display on Z board, it is a 128 by 32 display. That means it has 128 columns and 32 rows. So total number of pixels is 128 times 32. Now this entire display is actually divided into so-called four pages and each page has eight rows and 128 column making it 128 by 32 in total. So when you look at the data sheet, uh, they'll be using the term comps or comments to indicate rows and they'll be calling the columns as segments. Now this is a, a figure of page zero alone. So remember there are four such pages. So page zero has rows from zero to seven and column zero to 127. And wherever a row and column intersect, it makes a pixel, okay? So you can see like there are eight pixels in one column per page. And <clears throat> when we send data to the display, this pixel will be taken as the least significant bit and this pixel will be taken as most significant bit for a particular column. Now how actually the OLED display works? So, so uh, from the outside you are just seeing a display actually and there are much to that display actually. On the back end, it has a dedicated controller, another integrated circuit is there on the back side of the display. And it also has a uh, random access memory called the GDRAM or Graphics Display Data RAM. So what basically happens is inside this RAM, there are multiple rows of data. So actually there are 32 by 128 RAM. And each location in the RAM is mapped to each column on the display. So the idea is very simple. If you want to display something using OLED, first you write that data to the GDRAM and the display will take the data from this GDRAM and just display it uh, on the OLED panel. Now this is a monochrome OLED that means you can see either black or white. So that's why in the previous slide it is written LSP and MSP. If you make a bit high, you will see it as white. If you make a bit zero, you will see it as black. So you write some data here and he will take that data and use that data to turn on and off the LEDs in each column. So based on what data you write here, you will see the corresponding uh, display here. That's the basic idea. <clears throat> now let's take an example and try to understand this further. So suppose you want to display a, a character A on the display, okay? So first, you, first thing you need to decide is how big your character should be. Your character can be uh, a, a single page, it can spread across multiple page, or it can be even smaller than a page okay so there is no fixed size for a character as a designer it's up to you to define how big each character should be so here i am taking an example like each character i'm going to display will be of size 8 by 8 pixel okay so each character will occupy uh, eight columns as well as eight rows that's the case i am taking you can take other sizes 4 by 4 or um, 8 by 5 or 5 by 8, whatever size you prefer. Now here, <coughs> this is how you will see the character A. See, the, there are 8 pixels this way, 8 pixels this way, making it 8 by 8. Now you can see some of the pixels are white in color, and some of the pixels are black in color. 
that's how you visualize it as a now you need to read the pixel value column wise so if i look at the first column what i am seeing is considering black pixels as zero and white pixels as one what i'm seeing is zero 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 one zero in binary or in hexadecimal zero x four zero so if you write this data to the gdram the display will read from gdram and put it on the display and you will be seeing this column every pixel black except one pixel so same way if you want to display the entire character a you need to write the corresponding value for each column in the gdram so he will read it from there and display it here okay so if you want to display the character a completely by by taking the size 8 by 8 you need to store this particular sequence in the gdram 404c all of them are in actually hexadecimal 407c 4a 09 4a 7c 4c Zero, zero. We usually keep uh, the last column and the last row all pixels to zero because when you have multiple characters and multiple lines, okay, uh, only if you leave some black pixels, you can distinguish between characters and rows. That's why we keep these two empty, although it is an 8 by 8 display. Now, as a designer, it is, it is your duty to find out what is the sequence of numbers you need to use to display a particular character. So either you can manually do it or there are software available uh, such as this one, GLCD font creator. You can go there and you can specify the size and all 8 by 8 and you can you can draw a particular character for example here what it says is character 1 its corresponding ASCII code is 49 and how it should be displayed on the screen so I can say like 1 should be displayed uh, something like this okay something like this and you'll be able to say this And this information can be later used for creating the bitmap. So we actually call this as a bitmap actually. So any any picture that you want to display on the OLED, you need to find the corresponding bitmap. Which pixel should be on and which pixel should be off basically. Okay. <coughs> Now this is exactly what I told before, you need to find the bitmap for all the characters, not only characters, if you are planning to display some picture, you have to find the corresponding bitmap for each pixel and store it in the GDRAM. And when you are storing it in the GDRAM, uh, this is the order you should store. Okay, This is considered as the LS bit and this is considered as the MS bit, that's why we are calling this column as 0x40. Again, remember you have to do it column wise here, not row wise, because some other display uh, we do it row wise, but here it is actually column wise. Now, uh, when you interface uh, Zing with OLED, the main interface is an SPA interface, and you are going to send data to the GDRAM as well as the some of the commands to the G, uh, to the OLED controller through this SPI interface okay so this character information the bitmap and all you will be sending it as so called data in addition to that you will be also sending some commands for example you will have to tell the display controller on which particular page this character should be displayed or starting from which column this particular character should be displayed. So I can have A here or A somewhere here or somewhere here. So this information should be also provided to the OLED controller. Then only he will display it properly. Okay. So all this information is sent through 
this SPI interface. Okay, that's why we created an SPI interface uh, in the previous tutorial. So we will be going to reuse the same SPI controller to control the OLED. Now, in addition to SPI controller, there is one more control signal called the DC hash. So hash stands for C bar also. This signal basically indicates whether the data going through the SPI inter interface, whether it is a command or whether it is a data which is supposed to be stored in the GDRAM. Okay, so if you are sending some data to be stored in the GDRAM, we will keep the signal high to indicate this is data. But if you are sending some commands, for example, enable display, disable display, choose a particular page, choose a particular column, etc., we will keep the signal low to indicate this is a command. This is not a data for display. Now, uh, from the data sheet, actually, you can find out you have to follow a particular sequence immediately after you uh, power on the system. Okay, so more details you can find in the data sheet. And this is the particular sequence you should do to initialize the OLED display or OLED controller. Only after this sequence is executed, you can actually start uh, displaying uh, characters or pictures using the OLED. Okay, so initially you need to make so called the VBAT signal high, then you need to wait for two milliseconds, then you need to send a special command hex AE to turn the display off. Then you need to apply a reset signal to the OLED. Then you need to wait for two milliseconds. Then you need to configure the internal charge pump. You need to configure the pre-charge value. Then make VBAT1. Again, wait for two milliseconds. You, then you have to set the contrast for the display. You have to set the scan direction, whether left to right, right to left. For the display, you need to set the comp pin. And finally, you need to turn the display on okay so more details about each of this command uh, you can read in the data sheet if you're interested what each of them does but this is the sequence you should follow uh, immediately after powering up the system only after this you can actually use the OLED okay so that's about uh, this video so in the next video we will actually start the coding